What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Chronicles of the Asylum. My name is Max. I'm on the spaceship, so I don't have to clear too much smoke out tonight. Thought I'd try something a little different with the uh, with the Skype backgrounds. You know, you got to pull out all the stops when you get the Hefe on. Join oh, me tonight, no. the boss, the head cheese, one of the co-owners of AWR, Gary Emmett. Gary, thank you so much for coming on, stepping away from the herd of kids over at the house and uh, jumping on with us. Yeah, anytime. You know I'm ready to do this anytime we're going to do so let's get right to it. We've got a lot of stuff to talk about. We've got September and October stuff coming up. But August 23rd, this Sunday, we've got Rotten to the Core. We all know we all know why it's called Rotten to the Core, but we're not going to talk about it. Uh, that's August 23rd. Doors at 6, and then the first bell's 6.30. Uh, 6.45, 6.55, 7.15. 7.10, yeah. We will, you know, I promise one thing. We will start the show, and we will finish the show. And there might be an intermission in the middle. There's there's probably going to be an intermission at some point. Um, <laughs> if it's anything like last time, wear a t-shirt and shorts. Uh, it, it gets a little warm in there. Yes, it does. I found out, I will let all the fans know, I found out one of the air conditioners was not working. When we got that air conditioner working, they have dual air conditioners running in that building. And we didn't know until after the show, because we were trying to figure out why it was so hot in that damn building. Because the day before when we were there, it was cool. When I was there on Thursday, it was was almost cold in there. Yeah. Yeah, I guess one of the air conditioners went out on them or something. Some malfunctioned with an air conditioner, and that put us in in hot hot hell. Yeah, very, (laughs) very hot hell. Saying that, there there's something to be said for like obviously in a pandemic we got to be a little bit more careful. But there's something to be said for sitting there sweating. Um, it, it makes everything sound so much more visceral. The sounds of the hits and everything just you know it's that that yeah. Rocky in the yeah. in the cooler hitting meat. You get that sound a lot more. Um, and the other thing is the wrestlers were all pissed by the time they hit the ring. They had their, you know their gimmicks <laughs> on. And they were in a bad mood and. I could tell you by working in the locker room that night, um, several of the guys came back through the curtain very angry and had to be pulled apart again in the locker room. Uh, I mean, Bastard Cassidy was just at the show hanging out and ended up getting so pissed off. I know he and Justin Kyle have had beef for a long time, but was so pissed off that, you know, he ended up going after the freaking Bull Mastiff in Justin Kyle, one of the scariest. The dude's got traps on his traps. Like, I don't know why this is the guy you decided to go after, you know, uh, I think no that offense. says a lot about Bastard, to be honest, though. For sure. I mean, no offense to a guy like, um, you know, Dewey or Miles, but if I'm pissed off and going to shove somebody, I'm going to shove the guy that I'm a lot bigger than. <laughs> yeah, that makes a lot more sense. And then sense. let him kick my ass. But, yeah. you know, um, But, yeah. It, it, with the air conditioning being fixed, it's going to make things a lot more comfortable in the building. But that's still such a cool old building. I know um, the other co-owner, does he want his name set or no? No, no, we we will leave him MIA at the moment. He's, so the he's other owner and, and I were talking on the Thursday before uh, Fallout, and he was saying that that building has been there since the twenties. They used to show like plays there and movies, and it's yep. such a neat old building. And in, in, we'll call it uh, historic part of yeah, Indiana. It, te- it, te- it technically is. That's uh, yeah. it was it was hard for the uh, the remodel when we when you know my partner and his partner had to remodel it to get it back up to you know standards they had to follow a certain code just because of how old the building was and it's it looks I'll be honest if you're coming from out of town that part of Indy can look a little sketch but I can tell you that's all working class people my truck I accidentally left my truck unlocked the whole freaking day I got there at like one o'clock and left my truck unlocked at the bank parking lot next door no one fucked with it so it's it might look a little sketch, but it's good neighborhood, good people, um, just working class folks. So it's it's yeah. a really good spot. Um, and again, that's this Sunday, August twenty third. If you guys, I saw a couple comments on YouTube or on uh, Facebook. I have my second monitor over here, and that's what I keep glancing at. 
I don't I don't have all this shit memorized. So uh, when you so see it's better than you say, better than you saying it was a, you know Pornhub or something. Yeah, well, yeah, I've got porn, I've got two windows. So uh, oh, okay, got the the dual window. I got you. Yeah, yeah. You know, we gotta. Uh, but it, it's a... all wrestling. It's all wrestling related porn. So. You too! I'm I'm a, I'm a red tube guy, but we'll, we'll leave that to another conversation. Right? Yeah, that'll be a, a deep dive. I'll I'll ask you all the listeners this weekend and ask them where their what their go to porn site is. Uh, you know, with guys like Neil Cutter and uh, and and Vinny on the show, I might get some really weird answers. Yeah, Neil yeah. Cutter's gonna be like, I like to go to the Cincinnati Zoo's website. Like, what? Yep, it, I'm t- I'm gonna tell you right now, Neil Cutter's probably have something to do with cucks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've never heard "cuck" so many times in a in a promo. <laughs> it's one of my favorite dis, uh, disrespectful terms. Now I've been calling since I watched his interview and that promo. I've been calling everybody "cucks." Dude, it, it was funny because he took his glasses off in the interview, and he's well, uh, on other interviews mentioned how blind he is. You could tell he could not. John and I were both moving around on the screen. That motherfucker couldn't see a thing we were doing. Um, and uh, and that dude is legit hardcore wrestler. He is gonna ride a bus. He's gonna get on a Greyhound bus and well, come from uh, St. Louis to Indianapolis. There, Gary, I love you, but uh-huh. if I can't get my truck to start up in the morning on Sunday, I ain't coming down. You're not putting my ass on a bus, with Gary. Down there, well, that's a lot. I, I don't know. I got I got some. I got a lot of loyal friends. I might have you a taxi pull up. It might be a nice looking taxi. That would be, I could do that, but I ain't getting on a, uh, I ain't getting <laughs> a Greyhound. I've, I've done one Greyhound and it was the worst experience ever. So some guys, I got to salute, uh, Neil, some guys will do whatever they have to do to make sure they make the show. You know, that, that's, I salute the hell out of him for that. Well, and like Neil, uh, I was definitely taking a shot at somebody when he said, you know, you can call me at 6 a.m. and I'll figure out a way to get to the show. I won't text you at 6 a.m. and say, hey, that flight's too early. I can't get there. You know, <laughs> um, and here's the thing about Neil. I think Neil would say that right to that. I'm, I'm not, I'm not brave enough to to call anybody out. But Neil would say that right to that dude's face, right in his home uh, company's uh, locker room, and not give one fuck. No, uh, Neil's got a uh, set of the biggest balls I've seen so far. So far. And, and in three years in the wrestling business, I've seen a lot of balls. We are <laughs> we'll so he referred to himself as the the perfect late match replacement guy. He goes, no one ever wants me first, but you, they call me and they know I'll come in. And I want to see, and I want to challenge the other the other promoters here in the state of Indiana. Neil's not that far away. My hand disappears in the spaceship sometimes. Either I smoked a really weird strain, or this spaceship is eating my hand. <laughs> you got to stop taking that strain. I keep sending you, brother. Dude, I don't know what you sent me last Monday. But uh, that shit had me so freaking mellow with Chuck, and and Chuck's a guy you got to bring some energy into an interview with, and I just was mellow yellow yeah. on that. One. Yeah. Um, you and Chuck look like you shared the same one. Y'all was dude, chilled and relaxed, just having a nice, friendly conversation. It was late on a Monday night, and he and I were both just drinking some beer and chilling. It was it was one of the more fun podcasts I've done. Like I feel like one Chuck and I, like I said, kind of grew up in the same area. So it's like talking to a guy I went to school with, you know, just kind of clicked right away. So that was really, really cool. But anyways, um, challenging the rest of the promoters and stuff here in Indiana, guys, Neil's a hell of a worker. He said, he's going to show up at one o'clock and help get the ring. Right. Cause he saw, he saw that the ropes were a little funky. So he's like, I'm gonna bring some parts with me. I'm going to get stuff taken care of. That's the, that's the kind of guy you're getting in. I guarantee you, Neil, one, he said he's sleeping in the building Sunday night, but, but Neil will, tear the ring down if you know and neil's gonna probably co-main event or main event the show i guarantee you if they're tearing the ring down and stacking up chairs neil will be out there doing it uh um, yeah, that's that's what uh that's why i always mess with like the certain wrestlers you see on our show that's the reason why we have the same roster i'm not like other companies that just bring in random people because their name is hot i bring in the people that will actually work People that actually want to be a part of the show and take the uh, take AWR in our shows to the next level, and Neil definitely is. I actually mad at myself. I haven't had Neil back out, but uh, to the topic, uh, you know, when the situation happened with Cole, you know, we still love Cole. I see, you know, shout out to Cole. Uh, he had to get out of the show due to a personal reason, 
And, and we're all about, you know, our roster. If something happens, we're going to work with you. First name that came to my head was, you know what? I ain't had Neil in for a while. He deserves to make it back here. And it was, uh, Neil tell you the same. You know, as soon as I found out, I called Neil. Like, hey, you know, this is a situation. He said, boy, I've been waiting for it. He's been ready to come back to AWR, and uh, you'll be seeing him a lot more around here. And and, and Neil's not a, a fill-in. He's a replacement. Like, it's going to be yeah. a different match. <laughs> it's going to be a lot bloodier and a lot more violent. Um, but That's Neil's not a, a replacement, thing. and it, it's going to be amazing. And he draws a guy that I think only has one loss, maybe two losses. I know he's got the loss to to Drew um, in, in the Duke of Hardcore, John Wayne Murdoch. And that was, you know, and, and take that loss to, to, to Drew with some things to think about. Drew is our only world champion ever. He's undefeated in AWR. And he, he refused to wrestle John in a match that allowed weapons, even though he brought he and Justin brought plenty of weapons out to the ring for John to use. Uh, and, and the bull mastiff, Justin Kyle, got involved in that match several times. Um, and John still hung around for 20 or 25 minutes in a in a legit wrestling match, not a not a yeah. death match. So that's his only mat- loss that I can think of. There might be another one that I'm just weed braining on, but uh, yeah, the only other one would be in the tournament when he uh, lost. But I mean, me personally, I don't count yeah, you know don't. tournament losses. And the only only thing that matters in a tournament is who wins. Right? Yeah, I don't I don't count tournament losses unless you're putting a title on the line. Uh, I don't think tournament losses really uh, really hold against you. Um, so uh, also on the card, I, I I know their names now. I've I've seen all the heat, and I made sure I sat down and got their names today. Where Spencer, which is Dylan Dillinger and Nolan Edwards, versus Miles Morales, and then Freddie Hudson. Freddie Hudson. I'm reading too fast and going down to the next line. Getting uh, Freddie. Freddie Hudson, uh, and that's the of their new newly named. I heard they named it yesterday. Uh, shooters never die. So we're gonna have where Spencer versus Shooters Never Die. That's gonna be that's gonna be a not one to leave your seats for. I, I if I had my pick, I'd put that that thing right at the start of the night. And let those guys come out and light the house on fire. And um, I don't think it's gonna slow down after that. No, I know that you know if the fans you know that's watching and people that are watching, they've been to AWR shows. They know that our first match is the fire starter that's the one that you know everybody's seen it with the dlc i said it on uh, you know another interview people were telling me you know why why wasn't that co-main event why was because i wanted to wake the crowd up when you get to the show you're you're a little excited but you know when you have the situation that we had and we had such a long line wrapped around the fucking building people were tired 86 i went outside and counted 86 people were standing in line for i think when we opened the doors 40 tickets right yeah, the, the, there was, uh, I know at total we had, all total we had 193, and we had to cut it off. Uh, capacity at that time before they made the new rule, uh, which cut me down again, um, it was 195. And so we had, we had to cut down, <laughs> we had to turn away 30 to 40 people. I, I couldn't tell you the, the amount. It was almost still to the corner of the building of people we had to turn away. So I always tell people, you better get there early and get in that early spot in that line because after that capacity is reached, we're not going to risk losing our venue. And we will shut it down, and you will have to wait two, three weeks uh, for the show to hit uh, um, High Spots Network, Internet Wrestling On Demand, and Power Slam TV and our website at AsylumWrestlingRevolution.com. Yeah, so that's... That's a, a big thing. You're not going to see the show live streamed. If you want to see the show live, um, and I know we've only hit two matches so far, but those two matches are, you know, for for indie wrestling show, especially, you know, with COVID and everything that's going on. Um, you know, I know everybody knows I'm in the Chicagoland area. I know the big promotion up here, Black Label, is allowing 30 people at their show, but they're going to live stream the shit out of it. We're yeah. going to allow a few more people, but... There's no live stream. If you want to see the show live, you need to buy, go to the website right now and buy your tickets. Yeah. Uh, um, I don't think day of show, a, a solid game plan is showing up at, you know, 530 and thinking you're going to buy a ticket. If you're going to show up, I know I have to be there around 330. You better be pulling in the parking lot about the same time I am. If you want to get in line yeah. and get a, uh, get a ticket. 
I just had a fan tell me they were going to be there at two. I will not be there. So, so you know, that lets all the other people know if you want to beat that fan, then you better be there early because they're they're going to be there for a while, you know. And then now I will tell you, I know it sucks having to stand in line for that long or. or Whatever it is, you know, there's a McDonald's across the street. There's, you know, everything around, but you do not want to lose that spot and miss your chance to see the show. Yeah, this is going to be a, this is going to be a really big show. There's, there's names on this show that aren't going to be around in six months. They're not going to be around in a year in indie wrestling. They're going to be signed with somebody big, and you're going to be paying fifty or sixty dollars to see them. So it's, it's, it's definitely going to be worth checking out. Uh, also on the card. Um, will be Vinny Ratlock with his newly announced uh, opponent, Rathbone. Um, Vinny's been around for, I think, a million years. Is it just shy? About uh, it is, no, years. I thought it was like a uh, uh, million and two. I think yeah. this is his million and second year. Yeah, he's just, I, I, I feel like um, I remember hearing Vinny's name and seeing Vinny and stuff like in the early 2000s and stuff. And I, I could be wrong, but I feel like Vinny's been around forever. Um, and he's got Rathbone, and that's not an easy out. That's not a night off for uh, a pretty seasoned vet who could be on a kind of retirement tour, kind of doing the uh, um, like the, what the uh, Rock and Roll Express kind of does, and, and shows up and shakes some hands and does a couple moves and bounces. You know, Vinny could be doing that. And the other thing is, Vinny's got a pretty substantial side hustle that um, he doesn't need to wrestle anymore. And, no. and now he's got to deal with Rathbone. What, what, what was your thought making that match? And how do you kind of see that one going? I mean, let it be known, really. Uh, we With Taylor Myers, so sta- uh, so, so standing an injury, uh, correct me if I'm wrong on words, you know, I went to IPS. Uh, you, we did crosswords. Um, uh, but uh, he contacted... Word you're looking for, but it's all right. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. There you go, there you go. Uh, but... He, he contacted me. He's like, you know, it was a little rough conversation because he felt some type of way that he wasn't on this show. And I didn't have nobody that wanted to face him. Everybody was worried about facing Rathbone because he's created such a buzz since he, he since he started wrestling with AWR. And so he told me, he said, well, if you ain't going to give me something, I'll take it. He said, give me Vinny. And, you know, uh, I hit Vinny up. Vinny was more well, more than welcome for it. And with the crazy match that he has in hand, I, that one's going to be a wild match. You know, Vinny always says, or has been saying for several months now, that he's retired from death matches. Uh, I, this is still the musical instruments match, right? The stipulation didn't change? Yes, yes, yes. It's still the same. So, so I, I got a feeling that Vinny Ratlock and Rathbone in a musical instruments match, they're going to be swinging those instruments as hard as the deathmatch guys are. Now, they might not get as much color, but... And they're maybe, gonna put some work in. Yeah, they're going to put some work in. There's going to be 12 to 15 minutes of hard work in that ring and probably all over the uh, the beautiful Emerson Theater. Um, so, yeah, that's going to be... That's one to circle, as, as I think people might overlook and think that, oh, this will be the after-intermission match to get everybody back to their seats. And this has got the potential to to really, I think, um, either show that Vinny's still kind of around and that Vinny's still a million years in is is still a tough out and he's not a gatekeeper. He's not a litmus test. Or to show that maybe Rathbone is the is the real deal and he's got some things to say for the Dale Patricks and the uh, the John Wayne Murdochs of that other side of the of the equation you know it's it's going to be interesting i don't think uh and this is no slight to rathbone i don't think he's on the justin kyle uh akura um drew skills side yet i think he's still working his way there but in, in two or three years who knows so um you know it'll be very interesting to see there um and who, who are you taking in that one gary i'm gonna write down some predictions here you know you gonna put me in the spot? oh yeah for sure. I mean, that, that's really hard to say. It's I always mean, good to ask the pencil who's going to win the matches. <laughs> yeah, you know, let, let everything go. I'm glad we ain't on betting sites right now. Right. Everybody, be taking, <laughs> everybody be taking the, the promoters or for everything. You know don't, don't tell them. You're going to give me some notes. I'm going to head to Anderson before I come to Indy. Place <laughs> I'll meet you up there. Right. Nobody ever knows. No, nobody knows me. I'm fine. I don't feel like um, 
I don't. I, I might be wrong, but I don't feel like the casinos issue lines on indie wrestling on a Sunday. No, in they they need to though. We'll, we'll right. tell you that much. If so, you know, if someone gives me the right price, I might have to get in the bet line. Right. But me personally, I'd have to go with Rathbone. <laughs> Just because the the whole the whole you know power and deathmatch of what he's been doing, uh, Vinny Ratlock, as you stated, you know he he's trying to stay as far as away from what we call deathmatch as he can because he knows the guys that we got. The, the death is a good word in there because you could get your ass killed messing with them. You know, I, I think Rathbone, as you said, up there with Del Patrick's and them. I think he's itching on some hills. Uh, is he there now? No, uh, you know, because that's a hard, that's a hard crowd to follow when you've got the names you mentioned. You've got probably 50, 60 years of wrestling experience in between the group of names you that you mentioned. Uh, uh, it's hard to catch up with that in two, three years of, of being a wrestler, but he, he's very close to those hills. I think in AWR, he, he could he could stand with the best of them. Justin Kyle, I'm. I don't honestly think there's any person out here that can stand toe to toe with Justin Kyle, but I, I find somebody to deal with Justin Kyle because that that's going to be a problem. Boy, him and Drew together that that's that's the biggest problem AWR has. Uh, nobody can some guys that have maybe just recently dipped their toes into death matches for the second time. Um, some other names kind of thrown around that maybe could come in and tame that beast, but. You know, it, it still remains to be seen. That's a scary, scary dude. Later on in the card, we've got a guy that's going to come in and, you know, bring a guy up from Florida to try and get this guy under control. So uh, let's let's get predictions on the other two matches. I forgot to grab those. Uh, in the in the first match we covered is Neil, Neil Cutter and John Wayne Murdoch. Who you, who you got there? Boy, like, that's hard. It, it, that, really, that really puts me in the spot because I think the winner of that match, us. Right, fans. yeah, I agree. but we've we've uh, talked before on the show, and we've talked, you know, offline of uh, maybe a secondary style belt coming in and uh, equivalent of an IC belt. This has got to be a title eliminator. I know Neil hasn't been in it in a long time, but John's only lost to the best. Um, yeah. He's got to be considered an eliminator in, in that area, and for that, I, I'm going to put my money on on the Duke. I think John's got it. I think John has made kind of a history of of, of stepping over Neil. Um, and I don't see, I don't see Neil being able to issue enough damage to John to to hold him down for three seconds. I think, I think John is so durable and so tough that he'll he's just be able to walk through with the honey badger throws at him and and eventually come out of there bloody beaten, you know, with his hand raised. Yeah, I mean that's going to be a crazy ass match. I I as a fan, as a fan, uh, I can't pick a winner. Like uh, really, I think the fans, no matter who wins that match, the fans win more than anybody on that one. Uh, that that match, no matter, even if neither of them wins, if they both kill each other in there, uh, I think we win. I don't want to lose neither of them, but right, yeah. to to that point, it's just that match is such a barn burner and. and so going to be bloody and crazy. I don't, uh, I can't even pick a winner. That's fair. Uh, and then in the, uh, what my vote is to be the curtain jerker for the night, where Spencer and shooters don't die. Um, I know I'm going to take where Spencer, I was super impressed with how they were managed to get any offense in against Justin and drew, you know, they were, they came into the show. They showed up at the building at probably four o'clock. Uh, with their gear on opposite sides of the room. It was it was a really weird scenario when they showed up. They were on opposite sides of the room, fucking cussing at each other and yelling at each other. I think uh, Dylan got there a little bit before Nolan. Uh, and I know uh, Dylan was grabbing everybody. Where's Gary? Where's Gary? Who the fuck is Gary? And we're like, no, it's who the fuck is Sam Mitchell, not who the fuck is Gary. Yeah, yeah. Who the fuck is uh, Sam Mitchell? But... Uh, I, I know that'll pop him because I know he listens to the show. So hopefully that'll That's pop it. him. Uh, <laughs> uh, goes, get, ready, get ready for the uh, who the fuck is Sam Mitchell t-shirts. Those are coming soon too. That's what's up. I'll have to get one of those. Um, he goes, no, I need to talk to Gary right fucking now. My tag team partner is a piece of shit. We got to work some stuff out. We need a ring. And then they, they ended up finding you a little bit later. I was there with my son. I kind of blew him off. I'm like, yeah, whatever. Two two marks that just rolled in through the crowd or through the door that was, that was left open. And uh, you guys ended up talking, and they ended up going down for a singles match. 
um, and then ended up getting interrupted by uh, uh, Drew and Justin. And Drew and Justin pretty much beat the living shit out of him. But where Spencer was able to get some stuff in there, and where Spencer's been up and down the road for a while now as tag team partners, um, from what they did get in in their singles match and what they got in in the uh, in that tag match, uh, very technical, solid workers. And I think Miles and Freddie, both really good wrestlers, and it's going to be another exciting match. Uh, I just think they're not going to have those tag team dynamics down yet. You know, a tag uh, team match is a whole lot different than a, than a singles match, so there, there'll be some work for them to figure out. I would have to agree with you on that prediction, man. I honestly, I'm a huge fan of Nolan Edwards and, and Dylan. Uh, uh, I honestly... That's a force to be reckoned with right there. Those two together can put some matches that should be on other channels that we can't say or I'll go have to call my lawyers and right. have, to f- have to fight other people. Uh, so let's say maybe they own a football team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they used to. Now I heard another person and his wife, uh, ex-wife owns it. Really? Yeah, hmm. we're talking about XFL. No, I'm talking the shit out of me. Bay. Oh, you're talking about the Jaguars. Okay, them? Oh, I, I'm cool with AEW. I'll yeah, say their name. I don't think they'll mess with us. And I don't think WWE <laughs> gives a shit about a podcast with 5,000 listeners. But, dude, they're, they're weird. They got me on another show that had, like, 300 listeners. So Yeah, uh, I'm not bad. I'm not bad messing with Vince until he brings me a couple million dollar check trying to get AWR. <laughs> Get him on the stream. Get him on the network, huh? Yeah. Hey, uh, uh, I'm open to that. Right? <laughs> um, so next next one I've got written down, and remember, my notes are in no particular order. It was kind of as I could remember them when I was sitting and taking a break from work today. Yeah, uh, I'll let it know before you get into it. That's how we put it out. The way we put it out is not the way the show is going to go. When you show up, you will see what order the show is in. The way we promote it is not... Who's going to, I do never, I never announce the main event. I, I let the fans be surprised on what card is the main event. Hell, half the time we're surprised on what's the main event. It's the last two guys that are standing in the locker room. Gary's like, shit, whose names didn't I write? <laughs> yeah, who didn't go out yet? Oops. Max, Max, come here. What? Dude, <laughs> there's like four dudes still standing up here, and I only got six names written down on that dry erase board. I got yeah. you, Gary. <laughs> let Max cut, cut, let me cut Cape Bay for Max. Yeah, he's seen me last time trying to put the show in order. It was it got a little crazy. There was I should say, you know, <laughs> when people miss little fights, notes, little notes above matches that nobody could read. Uh, yeah. Well, it, 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 we all felt bad for you because we're like, oh, Gary must have had a stroke when he was writing this uh, match stuff out. Yeah, you know, no. Gary, smile. Can you feel your right hand? Do you smell almonds? <laughs> yeah, no, I've already had two heart attacks in my life. I don't need another one. Yeah, let's not uh, let's not go down that road. Um, no, I'm good. So then uh, we've got Charlie Cruel. I've got three question marks next to it. Here's what I've been told <laughs> by. So John Wayne Murdoch gave me some information, and you gave me some information. They said it's this big girl coming up from the Kentucky area, which is where Charlie's from. I mean, Charlie's mm-hmm. a Mickey Knuckles trainee, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. So Charlie's in that that area. That apparently is over the Charlie Cruel everything and ready to put her in her place. That's that's what I've been told. What can you what can you kind of fill in from there? I'm I'm gonna say it's one of the dangerous, dang most dangerous girls I've those, I've ever those seen. Those are rough. <laughs> no, like I, I really I, I love Charlie, big market Charlie, but. Um, I think she's got her hands full with this one. Uh, I, I really, really do. All I know is I heard this girl so big and so much testosterone, she has to shave her ass. That's what I heard. I've seen it. We'll just leave it there. No, I think we need to explore this deeper. Um, <laughs> is this your house? Or were you at their house? And then, like, were they, like, in another room? You walk past a door? Or, like... All right, there's so many questions. That'll be uh, yeah. next week on Chronicles of the Asylum. It's how did yeah. Gary watch the big girl shave her ass? And yes, why yes. is Gary watching big girls shave their ass? Uh, uh, I have weird kinks. It's okay. Like, I got a four and a half hour drive in the morning, uh, and I lose a time zone. So we're not going to have enough time to get into that one. But <laughs> yeah, so we'll just move right along. Chuck Stein <laughs> and Dale Patrick's uh, more ass stuff because it's, it's Dale Patrick. Yes. Um, AWR's baby boy. <laughs> 
AWR's uh, king of the art. This guy yes. is untouched in death matches. Um, undefeated in AWR. Undefeated in AWR. And, but he's got a he's got a, a Detroit Punk coming in to smack him around. And you know Chuck's going to punch him right in the mouth. And you know Chuck's pissed off because he just lost uh, his job with another promotion. They done fired him. He, he's out of horse land. He's done. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I know he's coming with a little. When I talked to him, he, he wanted to prove something to them for him being forced to leave. So, bro, that that's going to be a wild one. But <laughs> me personally, I'm always and forever going to stick behind AWR's baby boy. Uh, Del Patrick's is the most underrated deathmatch wrestler ever. And uh, Dale, ever. Has, Dale has had so many things conspire against him. No one would ever hold it against Dale to walk away. He was supposed to be a part of probably, in my opinion, the biggest invasion angle that was ever going to happen in independent wrestling. And that got mm-hmm. screwed because of one guy's ego. Um, he's been supposed to do multiple huge matches with big names that were going to elevate him on the national and international scene. And that just, even last month at our show, it, it routinely gets taken from him through no fault of this guy's own. This guy shows up early, ready to work, not in a great mood last month because he knew what was going on, but generally in like the nicest guy. Um, you know, last month was, was rough for most of us here in Indiana with, with, with losing Adam. Uh, and I know Dale and Adam were super, super close. Um, so that also, you know, I think led to that bad taste. And I, I think that gentleman from, uh, New Jersey was going to get this not just completely knocked out of him. And I think that that's part of the reason he didn't want to get on that airplane. And so what did, what did Gary do? Gary gets on the phone and brings up the guys that beat that guy before, that had almost died in a car accident and had been to jail <laughs> all in the last 36 hours. And he comes in and almost beats Dale. Uh, Dale yeah. had to jump off of what the 15 foot balcony. Uh, yeah. I'm not WWE ah! in it either and calling it a 10 foot ladder, a 20 foot ladder. Um, yeah. That balcony's legit 10 feet. And then there's a four foot high thing that you have to stand on. I yep. mean, he might have only been 11 or 12 feet, but still, Dale is bigger than me and I'm 230 pounds. Yeah. So, yeah. That's a and he, broke, and he broke the uh, exit sign. Yeah, he broke the exit <laughs> sign and almost broke Brent Havoc in half. Yeah, <laughs> and and Charlie Cruel. Uh, Charlie Cruel like, going, you know, uh, getting in there. A lot of respect, but it's a whole lot of dude coming down. Yeah, if you if you watch the footage, that was the first person I went over to check on when I seen it because I didn't know what Dell was doing. I came out of Gorilla just to see what was happening because I seen Dell fly by me up the stairs and I thought something had happened, so I came out the curtain to see what was happening. And uh, next thing I know, I see Nolan Edwards and John Wayne Murdoch going at it. Yeah, I'm confused as hell, and I'm watching. Next thing I know, I'm a, I'm a tall guy. I'm six six. Uh, I just hear something above me, and I look up, and there's Dale. I might have, you know, took a couple steps back because I wasn't going to get underneath all that right, ass. We're not, we're, not, uh, we're not taking that bump. Oh, oh God, damn. Boy, that's God, a damn. Damn. Oh, damn. I know. <laughs> that's a thick well, ass I was boy. upstairs. It was me, wow. Justin, Kyle, and AC Riley were standing upstairs. Um, and Justin and I were kind of talking, and I turned around to say something to AC because they were using that the license plate elbow pad he had. Um, and I was turned talking to him. He's like, Oh shit, I need to get that before I leave. And then Justin and I are kind of talking, we're getting ready to do an interview. And, um, Dale comes flying up the steps and, he, and we both are like, dude, what's wrong? What's wrong? And he's like, move. And I'm like, what? And he's like, fucking move and rips the curtain down. And I'm like, Oh shit, we better hold this chair. Cause he's going to kill somebody. <laughs> so it was, it was a big dude going flying. And I was glad to be in the balcony, not on the ground. Yeah, I, I was the same way. When I seen it, I hurry up and got the hell out of the way. I was a good, good squished by all that man, yeah. sexy manness that he has on him. I am too old and too out of shape to be catching a big old boy coming flying off the, uh, <laughs> off the I, 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 I said, said I love him, and he's AWR's baby boy, but yeah, man, you're going to hit that concrete pretty damn hard. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, guy, the guy that we brought up earlier, um, who ended up... Apparently, this dude's got balls that you got to carry in a wear barrel. Because this motherfucker went up and shoved Justin Kyle after he just destroyed two people. 
Uh, I didn't know what was going on, and the sad part about that is, you know, Justin Kyle's a, a monster, and I'm the one that had to go to him and find him for punching my security guard. And and, and I'm the boss, and even I was a real a little reluctant to to even step up to uh, uh, Justin and take money away from him for what he did, uh, bastard. I didn't know he was there personally. If anybody knows me at the shows and Max can speak for it, I'm locker room bound. Uh, I'm I'm gorilla. I'm I'm the one that's in there. So me out front is a, a, a rare thing that happens. Uh, but when I seen that happening, I didn't know what I was supposed to do because I didn't know, you know, me personally, I didn't know Bastard and Justin Kyle had problems, you know, until that happened. And then, you know, with everybody pulling them apart, I was surprised that that building was still standing after those two. But lucky we had as many people as we did to get them separated because if those two would have been let go, man, we'd been having to worry about finding a new venue again. Well, and not to mention you've got you've got um, Drew Skills right there, <clears throat> who's another very big boy who's also very pissed and trying to get it who I'm sure at the time, you know, one thing that we all know from watching WWE growing up and stuff is if the boys think uh, a fan is getting in the ring, it's all all out. Uh, I was in the locker room again uh, when this happened, kind of looking through the curtain watching, and uh, John Wayne Murdoch and I were actually looking at weapons and and, and the gimmicks that were up, upstairs and kind of talking about stuff. And um, might have had a – I felt – my lungs felt weird. We were doing a lung treatment. John's a real big herbal lung treatment guy. I don't know if he yeah, knows. yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, so yeah, so he, he's very he he likes to bogart the treatments, but he he likes to hold on to the treatment for seven minutes and tell you a story why it sits there and burns. That's yeah, yeah a good story. I'm not gonna have an amazing story. Or the motherfucker will lose his train of thought and tell you the two minutes of three stories. Yeah, that you want to hear the end of all three of them, but yeah, he keeps getting distracted and loses his train of thought. In the hot yeah. building, you know, we mean. Max and John, we all need our treatments as much as possible. Yeah, it's with that hot air, with you got to get those herbal lung treatments, or you're just yeah. gonna, you're not gonna be able to perform properly. No. Um, so, anyways, we're we're doing our herbal lung treatment, and John looks over at me. Max, is this a work or a shoot? I don't. Do we need to go down there? And I'm like, we probably should head down there. And by the time we got to the curtain, I saw a security guard get punched. I'm like, ooh. ooh. Man, uh, somebody yeah, better uh, go get some stuff uploaded on, <laughs> on Facebook. Uh, yeah. God, and I, and not to take it away from my security guard. My si security guard, like I said, I'm 6'6". Six, six, I'm, uh, I'm a beanpole. 6'6". Six, six, I just did, found out I'm like 200 pounds. So 6'6", six, six, 200 pounds. This guy's a, a good 6'3", six, 6'2". Six, he's good 220, 240. Oh, bastard! So, I bet he's closer to two. No, no, no! I'm talking about our security guard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Our security guard ain't no small guy. Uh, no. So you know, for him, he got floored immediately, and, and boy, that cost uh, that did cost Justin Kyle five hundred dollars. That was yes, uh, it did. Gary had to come down hard, um, but the the workers need to understand that we got to, you know, you put your hands on the reps, security guards, the promoters. The podcast guy from what I heard is twenty five hundred bucks if you touch him. This yeah, is what I, I heard. Right say, I was getting ready to say, you know, I, that five hundred was to cover his bruised cheek and him not suing me. So right, <laughs> that, that well, helped. When you get that. hit by a guy that big, you probably run by the minute clinic and, and get checked for a concussion too. So you know. Yeah, um, definitely. Me and uh, my partner Josh had to run him to the clinic afterwards because we thought he broke his cheek, we or his jaw, or you know something inside his because his face swelled up. He couldn't it work. It swole like crazy. Three or four concerts after that because of Justin Kyle giving him a good nine-inch jab. You know, it wasn't even. I don't even think it was Justin Kyle at full full strength. I think that was just a get out of my way love tap. Justin's got that. Uh, so when I used to work uh, at Pierre's in Fort Wayne, we had MMA in there the one night, and they had this 265-pound heavyweight that came in, and the guy with a jab broke another 260-pound heavyweight's orbital in four spots with a jab. Yeah. Justin is stronger than that guy. I firmly believe it. Justin is way bigger built. Justin is a problem for anyone. Um, now, let's get into that. So we've got Justin, Kyle, and Alex Ocean. We're bringing Alex up from Florida. 
Alex, the the broke neck kid, uh, the the guy, the only guy I know willing to take a gusset plate to the dick. Um, <laughs> oh boy, I might I need just, to do that. I keep having these kids. I might have to ask Alex the, the best uh, way to do that. The uh, the self vasectomy, huh? Yes, yes, uh, yes, I, yes. I think on a vasectomy, it's less to the dick and more to the balls. I could be wrong. Well, we, we can, we can not a urologist, but. We we can area it out right, but I don't need no more kids, so I might need to talk to Alex before Justin goes at him. Well, like I always said, you got to uh, pull and pray, and I always forget to do both. I forget to pull, and then I fall asleep and forget to pray. And no, I, 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 can't, I can't even pull out of a parking spot. So right. I'm a bad truck driver. I can't back up without loading, so i got four kids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm catching up. i got right. three, so. It's, uh, it's. It's never quiet around here. I, I, we have to record the podcast at night, so everybody's got melatonin in them and sleeping. Otherwise, yeah. there would be short people showing up behind me constantly. That's why I had to go out in the spaceship tonight. That's why. That's why I'm in the kitchen tonight. Everybody <laughs> sees me in the interview. They've seen me in the back room, my back room, outside, and now I'm in my kitchen. So <laughs> I got I got to rearrange myself every podcast that I do. But yeah, it's, I mean, so we, we've talked a lot about Justin. Um, scary dude and he wanted this match he came to you and said i want this guy um he came to me to... And, and, and when he came to me he said hey man have you heard of this neck break kid i'm like yeah yes i have alex ocean he said i want to be the one that can kill uh, i want to be the one that can kill uh, alex ocean he says everybody says this boy can't die and i've seen him do amazing things but he's never stepped in a ring with me and there's a reason we call Justin Kyle that motherfucker. He really is. I don't see nobody. And I've, I got deathmatch guys. I, I've had the slacks. I've had Corporal Robinson. I mean, he tossed Corporal Robinson, you know, mm-hmm. like it was nothing. Uh, nobody could really mess with uh, uh, what Justin Kyle is. And when the bull massa, and it's even more. After you just find him five hundred dollars, when the bull massa asks you or pretty much demands that you give him a match, you give it to him. Yeah, Wasn't it? It was in the the same meeting that you find him that he's like, you know, you're like, I think the story you told me was you were sitting, you had him come over to the house, told me he's gonna owe you five hundred bucks, but if there's anything you can do to soften the blow, you know, who would you like to who would you like to wrestle around into the core? And that's when he he came up with the the broken neck kid. Yeah, I, and once again, when you're standing in front of uh, the bull massa, the that motherfucker, and he swells up on you and tells you who he wants, pretty much give him who you want, or we wouldn't be having no AWR show this month. We might be right. not having a benefit show for me. He would, well, or he just would have gone and torn the Emerson Theater to the ground with his bare hands. Yeah, and then we'd still been in the same situation. <laughs> I understand that you know a guy that's got a uh, a backyard ring for quarantine and kill style shows that we could maybe get a we could get a show going on. I might I might know him, uh, and I could definitely you know have a good conversation. I could probably get it for free. Right. <laughs> <laughs> now, we all know who make who would make that decision, and she's sitting me. Yeah. Yeah, now, now the boss of that guy that owns that backyard, and now that, that might be who you're going to have a hard time having an AWR show in in their property anymore. Right. Um, but yeah, I think that's, you know, Justin's big word was viral. He thinks this thing's got the, the potential to go viral because he's going to kill this guy. He's going to be the one that, I mean, Alex was in, um, I think, in Tennessee last week with, with a guy that we've already skipped over, but I'm sure, we'll, you know, we'll definitely come back to it. Is Akira? They were they were down in Nashville last week with at a show, um, taking a huge jump off of a, a scaffold. Um, Alex isn't scared of shit, and he, his words on this very podcast were, "Justin's scared to come into my backyard. He's scared to come into the death match, so he's got to street fight me. So there's rules." I mean, and as you know, I, I kind of felt that, but you know, at the same thing as Justin says, Justin is an MMA fighter. Justin has ran through the best of them and the rest of them, and it, I think you know, there's a different style to them. But at the same p- point, Justin Cowell don't need weapons to kill you. No, and uh, and, uh, and to Justin's point, Alex Ocean put on Facebook this week. You guys know I can do regular ma- matches. If you can book me for yeah. regular matches, that'd be fire. So, Alex, you know, pick pick a lane. You know, you're going to come up uh, here from Florida and mess with Indiana's one of Indiana's best wrestlers. Um, 
Be happy that he's willing to meet you. I think a street fight's a good happy medium between the two, personally. Yeah. Uh, I think, and the bad thing of it is, is with them two, uh, people just look at a street fight and they think of the big three letters and just rumbling a little bit around the ring. I I don't see that as being a WR street fight. If anybody's seen any of our street fights, it ain't no just simple, you know, match. It's always gets a little crazy. And we, those two people, you got a guy that can't die, has broke his neck, uh, has jumped off a 20 foot, I think it was, 20 yeah. foot ladder, uh, an actual 20 foot ladder from a guy that used to frame houses. A legit I've seen a that shoot, video, that, and I actually, and I've worked at a pawn shop. Actually, you know, I put my day gimmick, my old day gimmick, out there before AWR. You know, so I know a lot about ladders. And he, what Alex said, is not a lie. There's a lot of people that say twenty foot ladder, and it's actually a sixteen foot ladder. Uh, so an actual twenty foot ladder and jumps off of jumps off of a scaffold that you'd use to paint a house. Uh, to a gentleman, like you said, we'll speak about later. Uh, um, so to put those two, you know, when he asked me that, the market inside of me popped. Like, I like both of them. They're both amazing workers. They're both uh, barn burners, and they both will do anything they have to do to kill the other person. Yeah. So before we get to um, the last match on the card, um, I think that's the last one. Let me check my notes. Yeah. Um, We've got uh, a special announcement. Drew won't tell anybody. I've hit him up on Facebook. I know I've hit you up, and, and you claim that you don't know what's going on, and I, you pretty much shoot straight with, shoot straight with me. So I believe yeah. you. Um, no one knows what Drew's going to say. I think with talking with the champ, who's nearly impossible to talk to without just – you need to be feeling having, like, the best day of your life, and you can get through 10 minutes with Drew. Yeah, um, that or you hit his PayPal and he's still going to be an asshole to you. Right. Uh, <laughs> I think he's he's tired of a carrier carrying that number one contender and refusing to use it. You know, he's he's answering a challenge on this card, a, a Corey Storm. Um, Akura missed a show. He said that was Akura's chance, um, which, you know, Akura had a vagina in his stomach, so he could, couldn't could really show up. Uh, not, you know, thanks to Matt Draymond. the tightest looking vagina either. No, he's got one of those been in the business for a long time, but still hanging out in Vegas vaginas. Yeah, um, like a slip and slide with Dawn soap on it. Right. He, uh, you know, I think he's tired of um, of Akura ducking him, and I think he's going to mandate that Akura. My guess, if if I was in Drew's, I would th- in Drew's shoes. I, I guess he's going to come out after Akira's match and demand Akira come and wrestle him right now or forfeit the number one contendership. And, and then my guess would be, again, give it to Justin, and then he knows that no one's ever going to be able to challenge for his belt. Yeah, I, I'll, t- I'll tell you like this. Um, I don't know. Uh, you know, I wish I could tell you as the promoter, you know, when you have a gentleman that is your champion for a year and, you know, has helped you, you know, go okay, fave, shoot straight, has helped you from your ground up state. If he asks you, he wants to make an announcement, you don't ask him why. You don't ask him what it's about. You you give the man the respect of what he's earned. It, it isn't something I'm not going to say that I like Drew. I mean, the boy can't even get my name right when I pay him. <laughs> so, he sure recognizes it on PayPal, though. Yeah, oh, yeah. well, you, you, you're not going to care who sent you money on PayPal. You're just right. going to take it. Uh, so, you know, I'm not saying it to save face with it. The, the, the guy has done way more than what is needed to earn my respect, no matter if I personally like him or I don't. Uh, if I don't like his ways, if it's, it's, he does his job, he is undefeated, he asks you for a chance to speak to the crowd. You give you give him a mic and let him do what he does best. Yeah, and I think um, whatever he does is going to be mean and insulting, and uh, we're all going to feel a little less of a human being when he's done. So, uh, I, I do that every time I talk to him. So, yeah, at least that minimum. Right. At least that. <laughs> and the thing to keep in mind, though, with Drew is I get – the chip on his shoulder a little bit. Who breaks in in WWE developmental? Who has their first matches against freaking legends and icons? I mean, the guy was, he's been around for, again, you know, the better part of 20 years and been, you know, and he, he knows Vince McMahon. The guy knows yeah. everyone. He's, he's wrestled the, 
Legion of Doom. He's wrestled. Um, the list goes on. I don't want to list a bunch of names because I don't know if we can get in trouble for saying names that are uh, owned by somebody else. He, he wrestled Tatanka at AWR's uh, first show, Requiem. He, you know, Shane Mercer, uh, Corporal Robinson, John Wayne Murdoch. You know, all these names. So he, he's wrestled a lot. He's been champion everywhere. Yeah, anywhere he's that's held mattered belts. in in the Midwest, at least I'll say that in the Midwest, he's held their title. Yeah, and and I mean, was a a, a legit TV and and rock star. One of my cousins that uh, I've got some family in the Cincinnati area um, shared the shared the podcast with Drew, and within ten minutes of sharing it, he calls me. He's like, "Was that Drew Skills from TV when I was a kid?" And I'm like, "Yeah." He goes. Dude, that guy was the scariest guy in Cincinnati for like five years. And I'm like, the Cyclones were there. Like, there's, you know, hockey players and all that stuff walking around. And, and the Bengals. And he goes, no, Drew. Scariest dude yeah. in Cincinnati. Yeah. So, Drew's been around a long time and a scary dude. And I, I assure you that uh, you won't want to miss that announcement. I don't know what it is, but I will be glued to the curtain upstairs um, to see what the, how, that, how that goes. Uh, and then, last but certainly not least... Corey Storm and against the AWR heavy or world championship number one contender, Akura. Um, this has the makings to be uh, um, a legit four, maybe five star Meltzer match. Um, it depends how much time they get, as long as, because uh, neither of these guys are going to get tired. Um, this has the makings to be that. Um, that ricochet match that was all over the internet a few years back. This has that that potential to just be freaking huge. This is one of those matches when when I when you told me about this one, I'm like, this gets seen by the right people. This has the potential for AWR to blow up and we go from being a big name here in the Midwest to all of a sudden I have to figure out how to get out to California for shows, you know, every other weekend. Um, Whoa. I wouldn't say every other weekend, but you might need to start thinking about that anyway. Right? Yeah. It's uh, <laughs> you know, I don't think I'd look at New Jersey. That's it's a little overbooked out there. But uh, well, I think I, I'll tell you what. I feel like getting my feet water in the uh, my feet wet in that water too. I think I think AWR out in New Jersey. I think we'd bring a different style out there. Apparently, I think the showboat I, must be cheap to book because everybody's freaking running there now. I guess. Uh, I'll tell you what. Uh, you know, hey Danny. You know, do you think your ICW guys are ready for AWR? The other guy, I ain't even worried about him. Uh, but you know, ICW, keep your eyes open because I'll come over there and show you guys how to really get down. Well, he's got our guys over there. He, he's bringing our, our Midwest boys that's, out there. So That's what I'm saying. Take, take them off your roster, man. Let's see who you really throw, got. Throw some but, team, uh, the, T and the, the AWR a, shirts on them. Because yeah. now I think uh, I'm pretty sure that Dale's going out there next month. Uh, Dale so. was just out there. Oh, Dale was just out there. That's right. J Dale was just out there. He wrestled in the pit, and that boy, he, he put on an amazing show, and he, he made AWR very proud. Uh, I'll tell you that much. You know, I talked to him before he went, and I, I let him know. I said, brother, go out there and show him what we do. And, and he just smiled ear to ear. So. Before we get to the main event, Dale's got some pretty exciting news with AWR. Yes. Why don't you go ahead and break that? It's been broke online and stuff, but let's kind of well, talk let's about, about a little bit here. Uh, I've been asked for, we started almost three years ago. I ain't got an exact date. I know when our first show was, but we started like two months before that working on shows, getting it ready to become a company. We, we've we been bugged. And I won't even say bugged. Let me take that back. We've been asked and asked and asked about AWR starting a, uh, a training school. Uh, a lot of young people want to get in the industry and they did not like me they did not know that indiana had a wrestling industry so they've always held that dream and then they, they didn't know where to go and that's indiana, another i'm gonna interrupt you real quick indiana didn't have a wrestling scene till about three years ago indiana very stagnant stale wrestling scene until about three years ago and that's no shots at the guys that run every friday in indy but the guys that run down in southern indiana in the same building with the same show with the same six guys uh, i'll take a shot there um, I don't even look at that part of the state as Indiana, really. But, um, you know, um, all of a sudden, three years ago, something changed now. Everybody wants to come up to Indian Run. 
Um, you know, what it, the it's hell weird. Was? Now there's now there's more uh, promotions showing up up here in, in northern Indiana as well, and it's it's almost like these two really brave dudes took a step and showed that hey, you know what, wrestling and especially violent wrestling in Indiana still has a place. So uh, yeah. I think you guys deserve a lot of credit for that. I, I appreciate that, and I get told that a lot by the fans. I I'm humble. I'm a, a very humble guy. I always when I came into this and, you know, we go shoot on here and we go, you know, cafe, but shoot straight with you. I came in this just because I didn't see wrestling. Uh, and, and I know there's wrestling fans here. Like before I, I became a promoter, me and my friends always talked about the independence, like the Chikaras, the, you know, ring of honors, you know, all, all stuff, CZW back when they were something to be, bragged about we we always talked about those those were my favorite promotions yes i did grow up on awa wwf and, uh, all them but my love for wrestling came from independent wrestling and, and we just took the chance because we felt like the indiana fans deserved it and like you said i've noticed i mean even with companies that we everybody when you say the word shit tons of glass immediately gets pointed to me i don't know it was some company i ain't even going to give them the 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 love to show say their name that i had like eight fans message me a graphic of them doing a shit tons of glass match with super certain superstars that you know have been around awr so i i, I love it i honestly uh, it, it gets I me have back no to idea what company you're talking about i remember seeing something on facebook but i can't it's a strain. It must be. Uh, I don't. Yeah, no, yeah, music. Yeah, I think that's what the 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 herbal, uh, you know, throw. The herbal lung treatments. Yeah, yeah, lung treatments. There we go. Yeah, those those help very well. I mean, I look at, I love it because I got told I wasn't allowed in this business. I got told you know, the wrestlers wouldn't respect me. I got told that what we were doing would never be accepted. Now I got people wanting to take my matchups. Now I got people that want to take my match names. Uh, yeah. It shows I'm doing something. I mean, the attention that we get from doing what we're doing, it, it, when I see other people do it, I just smile ear to ear. When people, like you said, it, it, me, I didn't see these companies here in Indianapolis when I wanted to go to independent shows. Yeah, and now There's a company a sudden, in Indy that runs don't. on Friday nights and ran Friday nights for a million years. Yeah, no, I'm and, into there, you know, so... And I, I mean, and I've been to those shows. I used to drive down from Fort Wayne every now and then to check them out. And it's, it's a different vibe there. It, it feels yeah. like you're just kind of at a show that's being put on regardless of what's going on. Um, yeah. I don't think it's any surprise to anyone that a company that used to run three hours south of Indianapolis now runs outside of Muncie and you know Muncie and Indy are not that far apart. Yeah. Um I, I'm not gonna get too close into shooting any shots, but we'll just say that the there was a large tournament ran a couple weeks ago in a Muncie suburb. And uh I mean Muncie's a suburb of Indianapolis. And if anybody tells yeah. you otherwise they're uh, you know that Muncie Anderson Connorsville area is all kind of um, that's that's basically northern Indianapolis for lack of a lot of people live that far north and drive into the city. Yeah. There's a reason those towns are getting picked, and it's not because of cheap buildings. Because let's face it, in this economy, there's cheap buildings everywhere. There's yeah, somebody has showed that somebody has showed that um, stuff can be done, and you know uh, I think history is written by those that are willing to be the bravest, those that are willing to continue to push things. Um, you know we still have ADT two. At some point coming up, um, there's we actually let it be known. Uh, we actually have announced that ADT2 is coming April 23rd and April 24th. It's a two day deathmatch tournament. Other than that, nothing else is going to be said right now about it, but let it be known that we're, we're coming back. And, you know, we already got the day ready, I already got the roster ready, I already got you know the details of it ready but i'm not saying nothing until it's time yeah and we've got plenty of time to promote that well months months and months leading up to it you know let's face it january february and march in indiana are pretty cold and boring we can have deathmatch wrestlers on for hours and talk so we'll get into yeah. that more um but let's get to the back to this main event um the uh, karen core storm let me that's gonna be 
Uh, Corey, Corey Storm and Akira is starting to turn into, I guess, OVW versus AWR. A lot of people are wanting to see this, and a lot of people are going back and forth on this. I've seen something that Akira put on social media. This is not OVW. Um, there's no shot at OVW. I don't send shots. If, if I really want to give hell to somebody, I'll just say it. But I, I don't think Corey Storm is ready for what Akira is going to do to him. I mean, Akira's not scared of shit. Akira will no. climb up on a house with light tubes on his back and jump on you. Uh, yeah. and he, he did that to one of his best friends. So imagine what he's going to do to a, a guy that's invading his turf. Um, and, you know, Akira, if you want to call, you know, so we've got kind of the king of the yard. We've got the bull mastiff. We've got the undefeated champ. And then Akira's kind of the bull of the woods. You know, give him the old dusty term. And I, I think Akira will be okay with being lumped in with Dusty. Um, if, if Akura's kind of got that bull of the woods mentality where he, you're going to have to, if you're going to, if you're going to get Akura to come out of AWR, you're going to have to kill him. Um, and when those little it's bulls a, get loose. He's actually said that to me. So yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, to me as well. Um, when, um, when, when I talked to Akura last time, he said, you know, the reason he didn't come to, uh, to fall out was not because he didn't want to, uh, or because of the injury, but because of there was enough blood loss and enough and and fear for infection of just the travel. He said the wrestling match wasn't that big of a deal. It was the fear of infection while traveling uh, and sitting in a car for that long would have really hurt it. So yeah, let it uh, let it be known that I literally even the night before when I talked to him, uh, you know that's what he told me. Um, 11 a.m. the next day, he's calling me, telling me he's still coming. I literally had to tell him. He was not going to be allowed in the building if he showed up because I'm not going to risk a superstar like that. And let's face it, Akura is. I look at Akura and Alex Ocean, and probably Justin Kyle, as guys that we're on buy road time to get to see. Um, Ten dollar, twenty dollar tickets to see these guys in another year or two is going to be by far and away the thing of the past. Um, Alex Ocean lives in Orlando or in Florida someplace. He's two or three hours from where um, WWE shoots. He's two or three hours from where AEW shoots. He's five hours from Nashville where the Impact shoots. ROH shoots all over the place. So, I mean, somebody's going to grab this guy, and it's going to cost a lot more money to go see him. And the same with Akura. Akura's an Indiana kid. Um, Central Indiana grew up, but is now down in that Kentucky area. Um I see him as one of the next guys to go to AEW on the uh, Cody Rhodes Challenge. I think he's he's violent, he's mean, he's nasty, and with with um, with um, Danny being out there now, you know, being released, they've got some spots for some violent guys. So uh, I don't think Cody Cody has the balls to take a cure match. Well, I know a lot of people think Tremont's ducking him, and this is no no slight at Tremont. I don't think he's ducking Tremont as much as he's not interested in that match. Tremont can't give him the kind of match he wants to have, but Akura can definitely give him that match. And I think Neil said it on the podcast the other night, and I I completely agree. And the more I thought about it, the more I agree. Cody wants to have that match that's going to leave the, you know, the dusty match. He wants to have, and not a dusty finish, but a dusty match in covered in blood and a war, you know, those dusty flare Dusty, um, um, why did his name just leave my brain? Um, who did be, player beat a player for the gold in 84? Um, what are you talking two years before I was born? Well, yeah, in a year before I was born, but I, I, am, I do wrestling. Um, 3.28 a.m. Harley Race. There you go. Name? Not in my brain. Um, you know, he wants to have those kind of matches, and I think, a guy like Akira can come in and do that. A guy like Alex Ocean, a guy like Justin Kyle um, are all more than capable of coming in and do that. A guy like Dale Patrick's can do it too. Um, yeah, he, he, my opinion on it, he's scared of real deathmatch guys. He's yeah. scared that he'll actually get killed. I mean, I will never take nothing away from Eddie Kingston. You know, I was saluting for getting Eddie Kingston. He didn't get the Eddie Kingston we all know. No, he did not. It, it, he he won't do an occur. He's showing, and my you know this shows that you know we have our own opinion. I think he is ducking Tremont. He knows better, and I've never worked with Tremont. 
I don't have any stock in, in, in boosting up Traymon or putting him over, as the workers or the fans would say. I have no reason to at all. That match is so... I, I feel like that match is up there with the hype that even more than a War, Warhorse had with it. You know, everybody wanted to see Cody with Warhorse. Hey, everybody salute Warhorse. You know, uh, I've talked to Warhorse a couple times, uh, but there's no reason why you're ducking Traymon. No reason. Uh, the match quality is still the same. If you if you say that he can't go like Cody, I think Cody actually can adapt. I've seen it in WWE. You know, he, he worked with a lot of different styles. I feel personally, he don't want a real deathmatch superstar whooping his ass. I mean, and that very well could be. It's We'll see as this as the Cody Rhodes uh, stuff goes on, but my money is on one of the two guys, one of the it could be Ace too, you know. That's another guy that, or not Ace, but um, Corey Storm is another one that could end up showing up on in AEW anytime. Um, Corey Storm would fit in AD, uh, AEW. Yeah, I, I think he'd fit in great there. I mean, we all know Akira said that he, if he ends up signed in, in Japan or AEW, he's thrilled, but he's not going to the one that ends in E. So uh, I don't blame him. No, I, I don't, don't blame you at all. Why? Why waste all the time building a gimmick to just have it stripped away? And uh, I see, uh, I see it different. As in, Akira has that love still. He has love for the art, and a lot of people don't look at wrestling that way, but I do. I look at wrestling as an art. They tell a story uh, every time they're in that ring. I think a lot of guys, and this is no, you know, shot at them. I don't disrespect them for it, but they go there for that paycheck. They don't go there to be the number one wrestler or putting wrestling matches or, you know, they, they do want to entertain the fans. I'm not going to take that away from them. But the number one goal in WWE is that paycheck. Everybody well, and you wrestle to, WWE style. You wrestle, you know, it's WWE is a different thing. If, if you still love wrestling, you're going to Japan. Yeah, Japan is a big goal. And I'll tell you right now, Japan's missing it on Akira. Akira would uh, Akira would fit so perfect over there, and, and he would he would destroy nine tenths of the workers. So that might be the problem. Yeah, the, <laughs> the thing with Akira is he's such a good worker and in such good shape, and now he's training for MMA. Uh, the dude's a legit scary guy. He's still pretty young. Um, all he's got's upside. Yeah, so. and he don't have to just do death match. That boy will choke you out in a regular match. So I mean, well, he can shoot really... you too. Yeah, you know, if you want to yeah. brawl for all it, Akira's probably went in a brawl for all at seven out of ten indie shows. Yeah. Um, and I don't care who you put in there. You can put some big old hosses in there. And I put I put money on Akira putting hands on knuckle or knuckles on chins. Um, yeah. or hands on knuckles on automatically or feet on chins. One of the yeah. two. Um. But yeah, I think that match is going to be. I think that match has the potential to be. I don't want to sound like a stupid mark when I say it, but I think it's got the potential to be Brett Sean good. I think the way both of these guys can tell a story, the way they can both move. Um, this has that Iron Man match from Brett and Sean without the first 30 minutes of stalling and, and burning some time down. I don't yeah. think these guys will go 60 minutes. Um, because I have a two and a half hour drive home after the show, I really hope they don't go 60 minutes or I'm going to be cuddling with Neil in the building on uh, Sunday night. Um, he's pretty hairy. So, you know, it might be a little warm warm. sleep. Yeah. Um, but I think this has the potential to be, like I said, I, I legitimately believe if Dave Meltzer sees this match, it will be in the four to five star range. Um, it, is, it, it deserves to be, uh, and, and you know, I, I don't care if I have to get on Twitter and send it to him myself. Oh, I'm going to do everything I can, you know, the night after the day after to get him that match and tell him, you know, put your education on this. Let me see. Let me see what you say about this. Cause these, both those guys deserve that. Both those guys and, deserve to get their, uh, their matches and their, their work seen by everyone because, I mean, they're doing what other people can't do in the big three. Right. I mean, these – there's – I can't think of a downside. Neither of these guys is a skyscraper, but I don't think that's a downside anymore. You know, there, no. there was a time when neither – when neither World Championship or the Federation would touch 
um, guys under six foot tall, but that's not a big deal anymore. Um, you know, you put a Kara on a show like 205 Live and he he steals the show. Um, and the same with Corey Storm. And and they're, you know, they're both, uh, they're both, I think, got the potential to to really do some, some things. So I had a name, you know, we'll, we'll five or ten minutes here and we'll wrap this up. I know my goal was 30-minute podcast and then Neil and I went. After he was done editing, or before he was done editing, that show was an hour and a half. Um, yeah, it was uh, like an hour four. Uh, um, yeah, and this one's going to be long too. But yeah. you know, it deserves I, to be. I mean, uh, yeah, we we got a lot, lot of stuff course. to cover. Come on now. Um, you know, a lot of new stuff coming in. Um, and and I, you'd said to off air that you might want to touch on it. You might not want to. Uh, yes. Um, we'll go ahead and talk about it. Uh, I mean, we do need to go back to something I missed earlier on, uh, on Dale, but we'll start with the September, September to remember, uh, September 26th, I guess is the circle city showdown. Uh, but, um, we are, I've been asked millions of times about this. A lot of people have seen, we have announced a lot of tag teams are going to be on the show and everybody's been wondering, you know, why do I have so many tag teams? I'll go ahead and let the cat meow, meow out the bag. Um, as of September 26th, we're going to have four tag, uh, four mat tag team matches. Whoever wins out of those four tag team matches are going to move on to a four, uh, four way tag team DLC match for our debuting tag team titles in October. So it's brand new belts coming in. Um, I saw some rough sketches the other night. Gary sends me a text message. You want to see something awesome? I texted him back. No. And then I just didn't text him anything for like 10 minutes. I'm like, of course, don't. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, if this is a naked picture of Gary, I'm going to have to go to the bathroom. Uh, uh, no, I'm going to be, you know. Uh, and he sends me a mock-up of what they look like. And they are fucking sick. They are some of the coolest belts I've seen. Um and when, when the boys get a chance to see him, I can tell you that's going to elevate that level. Gary, you want to go ahead and announce the tag teams that have been announced? And, and if you want to break a name here, that would be awesome. That would be awesome. I mean, we, we do have the Tribunal. Uh, that's Paragon and his tag partner. Uh, we have... Um, and those are Impact guys, right? They were on Impact? No, that that's the other team. Oh. We'll, we'll say that. Uh, but we have, going to it, we got... Um, the hustle and the muscle, uh, the X division championship at impact last night, they're coming in. Uh, we have death threat army coming in. We have capital vices, which a lot of people has been seeing them on AEW dark. Uh, thank you, AEW. Um, yeah. but we have them come. Did not in. have to let us get that booking. Uh, thank you very much. Yes, I really do. I, I've had problems with other companies and getting their stars. I think it was more on their stars, but you know, I'm going to leave that alone. Um, we have, um, I got to remember all these names, man. You, you're putting me on the spot right now. We have over the top, uh, a new, new and coming tag team. Uh, they're coming in to show what they have. Uh, we have the original sins, a lot of people's been telling me about them and their attitude fits AWR perfect. Yeah. So, uh, you know, they'll be coming in. Uh, Can we swing of... back to over the top for a second? Do they both walk out to the ring with baseball caps forward and then turn them around? No. no. Oh, they are missing. <laughs> the... we, we, will, we will have a conversation. We will have a conversation at the show. We might have to steal that Max. <laughs> we have, we have a lot of tag teams. We have, uh, that, that, the balcony is going to be nuts to butts. It's going to be, yes, uh, yeah. and it's going to smell real bad up there. Yes, it will. Uh, I will let you know that we might have to open because a lot of people don't know we have a VIP room there too. We might have to open that up uh, yeah. to, to put some of these tag teams in because you know uh, I have one more tag team. That name won't be getting dropped until after the show, uh, uh, after Sunday, uh, just because it's one spot. And I have a tag team match on August 23rd. So maybe people will get the recognition who the two teams it could be for that last spot. So can you go ahead and confirm then that it will be the winner of where Spencer and shooters don't die? Yes. All right. 
whoever wins that match will get the last spot in the tag team tournament. Now, I don't want people to think when I say tag team tournament, this is going to be a two, three event type thing. No, it's uh, whoever wins those matches, all four teams will meet up on October 18th and they will be in a four way tag team DLC match. So whoever wins that match will be the last tag team that is involved. Perfect. So that'll be, I mean, that's going to be, I'm kind of at a loss for words because I, I didn't realize uh, those those two tag teams had a shot in there, but there's going to be a, a lot of fun there, um, and that puts a lot of more on the line for Shooters Don't Die and Where Spencer. Um, you know, it's not just uh, establishing yourselves as a tag team, and a. I'm going to go ahead and, and and call you on it a little bit on what's been a fairly weak tag division, um, but you just you know for September you went ahead and just stocked it with some of the best tag teams in the Indies, so. Um, I think we've got a lot to look forward to in September. We've got um, ADG2 coming in April. Uh, I know we were talking about that this afternoon when we were kind of bouncing some ideas and stuff. I'm pretty pumped about that. Uh, and the ideas uh, are now, going. now, I will come in there and say we do have to finish about Del Patrick's and the yeah. announcement with him. We kind of got left field. That's once again, them lung treatments. We yeah. make us forget shit when we're talking. Um, we announced our school, uh, the Asylum Dojo. Um, that's, I will say that is in respect to the Rage Dojo. Uh, um, we have announced that Del Patrick is the head trainer for the Asylum Dojo. And the first, the first class starts September 7th. You know, if you want more information, if you're inspiring to be a referee, a manager, a personality, a wrestler, any of those, uh, you know, even if you want to learn how to shoot cameras, come on, we'll train you. Um, but it, it'll be four sessions a month. Um, you will get special training on shows. You will get special trainers coming in. Uh, so we're starting our own school to help create the next generation of AWR superstars because this ain't going to be just a fly-by thing. That's what everybody thought we was in the beginning, but we pretty much proved that wrong. It's uh, only $11,000 a month. You make the checks payable to Max Helgeson, $11,000 a month. Um, just find me on PayPal, and we'll get you in. Yeah, we'll get you in. Uh, if you need more contact information about that, you can hit us up. I decide, my, my editor, uh, um, you know, hypnosis or hey, comment one of our commentators. If you could put that right on across the screen, you can hit us up at asylum wrestling revolution at gmail.com. You can hit us up on our Facebook, which is Facebook, uh, asylum wrestling revolution. You can hit us on Twitter at AWR life. Uh, you can hit us on Instagram at asylum wrestling revolution. Any way of those. You want to contact us? Uh, we we can we can get you more information. Uh, the final signups for the first first class is going to be the day of September seventh. So if you're serious about making a future in this business, contact us. There ain't nobody better in the state of Indiana to get taught by than the king of Indianapolis, the king of the yard. But yeah, you're gonna, you know, that's gonna be a, a great chance for kids in Indianapolis to to get to get the experience. You know, Dale's a, a well traveled, really great wrestler and a, and a super nice human being. Um, we'll really be able to teach the kids, and you don't have to necessarily be a kid either. You know, you can guys get into wrestling later in life all the time, and and or some of them. I mean, Bill Goldberg got into wrestling fairly late in life, and I think we all agree that he turned out to be okay. Um, so I think. Um, you know, anybody that's interested, reach out to reach out to Gary. Uh, I know Dale has been cheering the hell out of it on Facebook as well. So reach out to the guys and get that set up. Um, it's a, a lot really of good super, opportunity. A lot of the superstars you see here in Indiana and in, in Midwest area, a lot of the younger ones were trained by Del Patrick's. And yeah. a, lot, a lot of people don't know that. Back at the other company uh, on Friday nights, one of those helpers that helped train all those big names that you're seeing popping right now was Del Patrick's. So to have that trainer underneath your belt, a Naptown Dragon, you know, you can't. Yeah, I don't see anybody else that deserved that spot. Me and Del sat down under a gourmet meal, which was tacos. 
at a local uh, Mexican restaurant that's that's gourmet to me and Dale, uh, and it it just I mean, it, a good chorizo taco with cilantro and onions. I can't think of anything a lot better. Yeah, the sad thing is, who didn't eat tacos that day? We got we got to let that be known. We took who to to the Mexican restaurant. He ate some other something else. You don't go to a restaurant like that without even ordering one taco. Hey, we do that. Like the other who yeah. <laughs> we, we 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 gotta we gotta have a taco on that menu too. If you ordered something, have a taco on the side. You gotta have some pastel. You gotta have something like that. Hey, you might want to redo that. Cause yeah, I'm gonna slap the dog shit out you if you say some shit like that, nigga. <laughs> Look, you your kids is, is looking at you. What you doing, nigga? <laughs> but yeah, so we don't we don't want uh you know people to think that it's just a, a, a seminar. It's just something that's going to be a one off. You're going to get in the ring and bump and, and learn how to bump and everything, right? Yes, so you're going to do everything. Uh, if you want, I will tell you. A lot of people, you know, got contacted me said they wanted to train to be a wrestler, but they you know didn't want to learn. The deathmatch side of thing. That's not what this is about. This is about learning the fundamentals. This is about learning how to talk. This is about learning how to walk. This is how to learn how to fight. You know, now if that's something you want to get into, who better to learn from? And Dale will be the first one to tell you that if you want to be a deathmatch worker, you need to be a really good wrestler first. Yes. The guys that you're yes. seeing in, you know, out east and, and on these big deathmatch shows are. If you take the weapons out of the ring and give them 12 minutes, are going to put on a three and a half star match. Yeah. Um, these are really good wrestlers with really good gas tanks, and and that's going to be the things that I'm, I'm sure Dale will will hit pretty hard. I I went, you know, I, I did a little wrestling school myself because uh, you know my plan was to be a manager all along, and uh, um, we won't get into that. I, I've talked about it enough on other shows that other people are tired of hearing about it, but um, got a yeah, chance tell, now. You might get that discounted price. I am a dad of four <laughs> kids. The last thing I need to be doing is bumping around a ring. If you bump, um, I'll bump. How about that? Um, you know, I had that neck surgery and shoulder surgery. I think I'm, I'm good. Uh, anytime you need a baby face tag team to help them get over, though, I, I do have a bit of a gift of gab. And I'm not scared of the crowd. So there we go. Help you just out keep, there. You, keep you away from the bad guy, son. We'll get you right. a cage and just keep you in a right. little glass Jim cage. Jim Cornette me in a shark cage and I'll be just fine. Um, Fuck Jim Cornette. Just right. let that be known. But that that is a really cool gimmick to put him in a shark cage and lift it above the ring. That is yeah, one of the coolest things. Uh, you know, since, since he wished death on one of my friends, I'll wish yeah. death I on mean, him. I wish that shit would have broke. Yeah, I wish you wouldn't have had to deal with none of this shit. But that's just my opinion. That is right. not the opinion of AWR Asylum Wrestling Revolution. Sucks is I enjoyed his podcast until he decided to wish Raver would have died, and then I can't even fucking look at him. So uh, I hope he. I don't. I'll tell you right now, he won't. Step foot. I have an open invitation. He about all that talk. I know he won't see my stuff. I, I, if he does, it'll, it'll get me hard just talking shit about me. But um, uh, he has open open invitation to AWR anytime he wants. But I will let him know. You better bring more than a wife that's willing to bang the workers because I have a lot of guys that are very highly shitty at him for that. Yeah, it would not so. be a smart building to walk into. He's not coming anywhere near. All him and um. You know, a, a guy from 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 Lima, Ohio, are trying to do is get commissions in everywhere, and you know they're they're on their own they're on their own agenda, and that's that's yeah. not for that's not for here or for this conversation. But you know, there's um, the the dojo is going to be such a cool thing. It's going to be it's going to it's it's going to have some trickle down effect too. There's going to be some great wrestlers that come out of that. You guys are going to get to see at AWR first, um, and you know. The first class ends in, I think, October, right? They're going to go the second week of October? Yeah, it should be. I mean, uh, we put it, when me and Dell spoke about it and just, you know, giving more information than what we normally do, but I'm an honest guy, uh, uh, we don't want to set a limit on how long the classes last because some people don't learn as fast as others. So, you know, if if you sign up with us, we're not going to, hey, at the end of this, you know, sign up day, at the end of this, you're you're done. Or you have to sign up for another whole session. We are willing, once you sign with us, to help you get ready to become a wrestler. We, we will not give up on you because 
you know, you've went 12 months, you've went eight months and you're still not fully there. We're not using this as what a lot of other people do as a money grab. We're not carnies. Uh, yeah, we're, we're not carnies. We're not people that, you know, like to take advantage uh, of learning students. Uh, we're here to create a generation that's better than what we have now. That's the best thing about this. That's what you do in life, period. You make sure the next generation is left off better than you had it. And that's really what we're looking for. We're looking to create a next generation in wrestling because if we leave it up to others, you'll have the same situations that's been happening for the past two years. And these kids, just the the younger guys, just haven't had a chance to really get in with anybody amazing in a long time. And Dale's gonna, I I uh, with his, I don't know Dale, don't know Dale that great, but I know Dale know well enough to know that if he puts his heart into something, he's gonna make this thing amazing. Um, I guarantee there's gonna be names of Indiana royalty walking in that building. And I don't want to drop any names because I don't want to put anybody on the spot, but you know, there's I guarantee several guys that you've seen on TV out east will. Uh, will make appearances and it, it's going to yes. be a, a really good experience. And, um, you know, and the trickle down effect for us fans is we're going to get, like I said, we're going to get first crack at some really young, good green wrestlers that we're going to get to watch mature grow and then probably watch them on TV. You know, it'll be, you know, uh, you know, October for the guys that are almost there, but want a little polishing, but then it'll be maybe July. We see a couple of the kids come out of the dojo and maybe they work a match after intermission. Um, and then by next September, I would imagine we'll start seeing them in, in some in some matches. And it's going to be really, really cool to see. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Um, any, all that graduate, being, any graduate of the asylum, you will see in the AWR ring. I can guarantee that to anybody listening that might have that thought that we're just going to train you and take your money and then, hey, go out there and make an earning. No, if you graduate the asylum, you will have a spot with AWR guaranteed. That's guys, that's, that's big. Cause if, if you know, if you know Gary at all, he pays well, he takes care of his people. Generally he feeds them and has bottles of water, except when the building's a thousand degrees and he doesn't have that. Um, <laughs> bang, bang at me too. I call right? it out on I'll, I'll shoot at okay. anybody. I, I ain't scared. I'm, I'm a big, uh, if I got to take my glasses off, I got to take them off. Uh, mm. But all that being said, you know, I do want to kind of wrap it up. We're rolling up on that hour and a half mark. So August thir- 23rd, rotten to the core. Doors are at 6, bells at 6.30. You know, by I would imagine by 8.30, the first match will be on the in the ring. Um, we'll have, we'll have, I, well, there will be wrestling. At some <laughs> point on the evening of August 23rd, wrestlers will get into a ring and, and yeah. combat will incur. Um, but, yeah, it's going to be an amazing show. Uh, big names all over the place, like Chuck Stein coming down from Detroit, Dale Patrick's from Indianapolis. You got guys from all over the place, Neil Cutter from St. Louis, John Murdoch from Lexington or Louisville, all those towns of Kentucky look the same. Um, there's horses there, Justin, uh, Justin Kyle, Alex Ocean from Florida. You know, you've got lots of different better or promoters, guys re- represented here, and it's going to be a really big chance to, to see what's going on. And don't forget that special announcement from Drew Skills. Um, who knows what's coming from him. Uh, and I can't wait. I'm going to end with my high point. I'm going to ask you what your high point is, and then we're going to take off. But I know I can't wait to see what high point that Alex Ocean jumps off of. What about you, Gary? What's your, what are you looking forward to most? You there? Yeah, let's try that again. Okay. I know we're going to, I'm going to kind of end with what I'm looking forward to most on the show. And then I'll ask you and then we'll sign off and we'll let everybody get on about their day. I know the thing I'm looking forward to most in this card is Alex Ocean. What high thing he's going to jump off of. Uh, I think Alex Ocean is going to be on world star hip hop before, uh, before Monday morning. Well, what are you looking forward to? World most? star. Uh, the, I'll tell you right now, the thing I'm looking for most is it's not a match. It's just, these nuts. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> it's not a match. It's just seeing those fans get the wrestling they deserve in Indianapolis. That's what I'm looking forward to. Spoken like a true promoter right there. But yeah, it's that's true. It, it, it is. I think I, I agree with you. I had a lot of fun standing in the back and just kind of watching the crowd react to a show and, and watching guys that you know kind of well go out there and do what they do is, is pretty fun. So. Yep. That's been Chronicles of the Asylum, guys. 
August 23rd, doors at 6. You better get there at 2 o'clock if you want to get tickets if you're not going to go to the website. Um, Rotten to the Core, there's going to be a very limited quantity of Rotten to the Core shirts. I saw the box a minute ago. Well, now it was two hours ago. Um, but yeah, it's going to be insane. There's there's the box. Hopefully they got an extra big boy in there. Uh, uh, we got a couple of big boys in there. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be an amazing night. You're not going to want to miss it. Be there. Why didn't you stop recording? Hang on. We're all running, you're Thank you, Tony. Just kill you in your sleep. Yeah!